This week, the bonus stage takes you to HP's Cool Town Innovation Center, where we take a glimpse into the digital life of the future. In part one, we saw how our home doubled up as a personal assistant. In this part, we see how we might be communicating with our loved ones in the future. Welcome to Misto. Misto is a prototype. It's only a prototype, but really it's actually based on industry standard compliant components all put together as a prototype environment. It's a PC and a coffee table. Now there's no rocket science in this coffee table. This coffee table was built by HP Labs eight years ago. Now, if you love the coffee table experience and you want this next year, you can. You can get it from Microsoft. It's called Surface. The actual product from Microsoft will be available next year and it will be something similar to this experience. But what's really interesting is HP Labs built this eight years ago. There's no rocket science in this coffee table. It's running an old Pentium 4 processor. It's running a 40-inch LCD, and it's running on XP Service Pack 2. You can see how much water-rich is gas you're using in your home. You can see what videos have been recorded to you on your PVR. You can see what music files you've got. You can also see that a vi my wife has left me a video. Let's have a look at that video from my wife. Well, she's not really my wife. She's my proxy wife. Oh, there she is. On, on, off. Hi. Hi, Al. Isn't she nice? Um, uh, Wonderful, long. Not shopping again, please. Oh, hey, no. Uh, don't forget, I have an appointment uh, with Monsieur Jean-Jacques, that lovely man of mine. Uh, he's a genius. What would I do without what him? What would you do without him? Okay, so that means I'm going to have a late. She's asking me to cook dinner. So what's in the cupboard? I've got sensing technology. When I open the cupboard, it's, she knows that I'm over here. This is spooky, right? Uh, why is the order? Pizza, okay. She's also RFID or your EasyLink card. Can be recognised. But by, by the way, I never listen to what my wife says, and that's why I get in trouble. Okay, I think she asked me to cook dinner, so I open up the fridge. I go to the fridge, see what's in the fridge. The light turns on, and lo and behold, she knows I'm here. She is one spooky lady. The kids love that mother. Why don't you go online, order a couple of their favourites? <laughs> Who says you need to sit in one place to watch TV? It follows you around. Okay, so she's asked, yes, bye. bye, turn it off, bye. So this is quite interesting, she just asked me to order pizza. Okay, so here we have a piece of paper. I could have received this actually physically, someone's handed it out to me at the bottom of an escalator in a shopping mall, which happens a lot here. Or this could be in the local newspaper, such as Straits Times. Now what's really interesting about this, this is just an ad. There's no rocket science or any special information in this paper whatsoever, so, so to speak. I can actually read the information, I can look at the picture description, or I can actually see that there's two individual images here, which I'm not sure what they're for at this point in time. But it says down the bottom, if I've got a camera phone, please get your camera phone and SMS this number at the bottom. So this will work on anybody's camera phone, right? So long as it's Java enabled or it's based on Symbian or something standard, right? So all we need to do is actually place my hand in front of this camera or actually this ad in front of the actual camera phone, in this case, or the camera at home. And lo and behold, it actually identifies that individual symbols. You can see an L symbol here and over here where the pizza's rotating, you can see double Ls. What's actually happening is that when I download it via that SMS and application, the camera now locks onto these unique traces and when it sees these traces, it overlays rich content and media. Let's show how a company like BMW has taken this to the next level to allow their perspective buyers to really be more en engrossed in this technology. Now, on the ad, it would actually have the images of the vehicle, etc., and other things, but the Z4 logo will be on there somewhere. Same principle. You put the Z4 logo in front of your camera or your webcam at home, and what it actually did was overlaid an image of a BMW Z4. Now, you can see here, this Z4 is now associated to this Z4 logo. As I pick it up, I can actually do somewhat, basically gesture with it and move it around and see it in different forms. I can actually get more insight and see almost a 3D view of this vehicle. But the BMW Z4 is famous for being a convertible. So let's have a look at that. You actually physically were able to customize this and still are able to customize it to colors, silver color or gold color or even a red color. The other thing was the car is actually a convertible. You could hit the open button and it would basically animate to show you how the car would look as it would be as a convertible Z4. So likewise through the screen or via keyboard, I can actually physically start to actually drive this around. So imagine this, I'm using a keyboard because typically a lot of uh, touch for the hand phones these days actually use a little keyboard. So that was the experience typically for the mobile operator and user as well. So at any given time, you can actually use any of the buttons on your hand phone or the touch screen 
and actually start to move the FR around. But the whole idea is actually you've physically got all this information associated and you're actually doing this with your camera phone. Right now, like the Apple TV and like see the Xbox 360, how does how does cooldown stuff like complement the future of home entertainment? Oh well, those ones actually, their cooldown actually is physically showing how these standards are actually evolving. So if you look at Apple TV and you look at the Xbox 360, they are what they call DLNA compliant, Digital Living Network Alliance (DLNA). Okay, which the underlying protocol, if we want to call it that, is actually called UPnP, Universal Plug and Play. So they're media streamers. So if you look at actually the, the culmination of the futuristic HP digital home, it's based on standards. And those standards uh, could be something like the home grid standard from ITU, which is being formulated with 20 different companies, which HP is participating in that. And part of that alliance is also tying up to ensure that communication will occur across any sort of wired environment, from power line, copper, coaxial, it doesn't really matter. But also, you'll get that commonality of the experience for digital home and entertainment through the DLNA type environments as well. It's important to note that most of this technology is available today, but has yet to be optimized for ease of use in our everyday lives. How pervasive these technologies become will depend on how well we interact with them. In the next part, we check out more of what Misto can do.